Hello everybody, welcome back. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. I hope there's plenty here to keep you occupied. Today, we are gonna rehouse our Stromatopelma calciatum, the feather leg baboon. Now, um, she is in this enclosure here, which we paired her in uh, recently. And I do believe She's got an egg sac at the moment, which is ready to be pulled, if it is in fact there still. Because we've not had a look for a couple of weeks, and these are notoriously bad for not looking after their egg sacs. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna set this enclosure up first, ready for her, and run down a little bit of how we look after our feather leg baboons. So what we've got, we've got all our stuff all ready here as normal our clay balls in, don't forget, we don't need a huge amount, we've got our membrane here, there we go, and then we want some soil, we're just using our normal Potting compost, get that in there like that. Remember, we don't need to be too fussy. Let's get that in there. So, we're going to mix a bit of our beastie substrate in as well. And that's because this is a natural mulch and uh, it will provide some nutrients and what have you for the plant and the moss. So it's all good stuff. Put that down there. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this on top. And as you can see there, we don't need to give a huge depth of soil for any other reason that than the little bit more that you put in there will actually gain and help with the humidity. Now the feather leg baboon, coming from West Africa, does require reasonably high humidity for the majority of the time. So these guys can, they'll like it up to sort of um, 75, 80% humidity. Will, will keep them very, very happy. Do, I'll put a little bit of that in there. So we're gonna go for our normal piece of bark on the back wall. And don't forget, we use this, this um, the bark like this, so that we can see behind here. When she webs this up, we still got access in here. We can shine a torch through the web and we can see exactly what's going on without disturbing the whole tank. So we're gonna put that in there like so. We've got a nice little plant here. Quite a colourful looking plant, I do like that. I'm gonna pop that in there. So I think we're gonna put a little bit more soil. A little bit extra. This is more for the, the plant's benefit now. Now the plant itself will root right the way down and, and root all the way down into the membrane where the roots will be able to run out and they'll get moisture from the, from the clay balls. So we've got that there. That is a pretty little plant, that. I do like that. Bring that up a little bit. Put that in there like so. And then we've got our moss here. Now don't forget, we can play around with the moss. So we just tear off pieces. This is all wild stuff that we've collected. Perfectly safe. 
And the, the MOS is multifunctional in the fact that not only does it give us a nice look, but it also helps trap the moisture inside the enclosure. So what we're doing now is we're literally just trying to look at it, get the shape out of it that we want. Yeah, might fit better that way. Literally just tear it off. So, look at that. Should have been a carpet layer. Put that in there. Get these edges off. Fits in lovely. So you should literally just put that in like so. There we go. And it gives us a nice clean finish. And this will help lock all the moisture in down below. And it will be slowly released, which will give us the humidity requirements that we're, we're after. So we've also got another little piece here just to give us a little bit of a little bit of extra just to give a bit more closes that top up a little bit as well we've got our water bowl which we will put there hot glue gun on the ready oh and that is hot look at that oh dear On there, and we fix that in like so. Making sure we got it relatively level. And don't forget, by spraying it, we cool it down straight away, so that, that is actually fixed in place. Now that is perfectly safe now. Our spider's not gonna get stuck to it. We can fill that up. We whop a little bit of, a little bit of moisture just on this moss, just to help bed it in, water our plant. And just stick a little bit here, that's fine. Is all we need there. Right. So there, there is our finished article. All done up, nice and quick. Doesn't take long. We can get rid of that. Now for the fun part, we're going to put the lid back on. Because generally speaking, with arboreal spiders, they generally, when you put them in, they want to go up. So we close the top. A lot of people will close the front and try and put it in the top. It's gonna to come back up at you. And with a feather leg baboon, we really don't want that. So we put her in the front. If she bolts, she'll go to the back, disappear. That's not a problem. That's fine. That's exactly the kind of attitude, the kind of thing that we want, we require from her. So here she is, and as you can see, this is a rather, rather dreary looking enclosure. It's seen better days. Now, we can take the lid off because we're not worried about her going anywhere because she is sealed in. And if you look on there, you can see where she is entirely, she's sealed in in here. And with the feather leg baboon, they're the same as the um, Starburst Baboon, the Maculata, in the fact that they web their egg cases to the side of the glass or the side of the bark, whichever they prefer, and, um, and they attach it to the wall. So it's not like a free standing egg case like we see with other spiders. 
So what we're going to do now, we are going to take that off of there because that's going to get in the way. What we're going to do, we open the door so that we can get the bark to come all the way back. Now these do deserve a certain amount of respect. You can see here, look, she has fully webbed that in. That is absolutely lovely. Camouflaged it with all the bits of bark and soil and things. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna just break into this very gently. We don't want to upset her. The last thing we really require is a bad tempered feather leg baboon. So we're gonna pull the bark down here generally like this. These guys are very, very fast. And uh, they're not particularly well known for their good manners. Now, oh, bleeding hell. Excuse my French. This egg sack has hatched. So this has just made it very interesting. Um, right, okay. Yes, it's hatched. So that's a success. That's really good news. I'm very, very excited about that. Um, now she has not moved us an inch. And if you want to come up here, you can have a real good look at her. You can see her there. I'll angle that to you a little bit. Would that be better? See, there she is, and you can see the babies. See the babies there, to the left of the picture? Hmm. Right, let's see if we can't remove her. This piece of bark does not give us much options. Right. So far, so good. She's actually stayed put. Right, we're going to have a bit of a brave move here now. We're going to try and remove this piece of bark. As she comes into the daylight, she might start feeling a little threatened. And may want to move. We're going to detach. Here she goes. She's starting to think about things. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do now is we're going to. Pop this on here. She is underneath here. Try not to move that. Now we've got our catch cup ready. What we're going to do now is we are going to try and move this back very, very gently. Pull them babies. Look at that. What an amazing sight. She is being very, very well behaved. Doesn't she look beautiful? Note the condition here. Her abdomen is still in fine form. There is babies absolutely everywhere. So now, what we want to do is get her to walk into here which might be a bit of a game. Are we ready? 
What we're going to do is we're just going to very, very gently try and move her. We don't want her to take off quickly. There we go, girl. Just want you to move nice and slowly. Here she goes. We want the babies to stay where they are. There we go. You see how she's spreading herself out. She's hunkering down. She's like, I don't want to leave. Come on, madam. In your own time. Now these these guys, uh, she see now she's turning round because she's realising she's leaving the babies. So what we do is we tap on the opposite way. We just want her to go nice and steady, steady, steady. There we go. You can do it, girl. We want to block her exit a little bit. There she goes. Now she's there. She comes up the panel. Look at that. And she's gone back behind. Right, so she has gone exactly where we, we wanted her to. And now, look at all them babies. What an absolutely wonderful thing. Let me get some real good close-ups of these guys. Let me get a little bit more light. Aren't they beautiful? Very, very leggy. Now these guys, as we were saying, they make a hammock, which is pretty much what you're seeing here. This is the hammock here. This is where underneath here, this white patch, this is where they would have been coming from. And they've come out of these little holes here. You see these? And they've come out into the secondary layer. And then they've, they're in this piece. So this was the top of the actual cocoon. And that's the egg sac there. And as you can see, they're all very, very nice and healthy. So what we need to do now is we're gonna to have to catch these guys up and um, they will go into our nursery pot here, which is basically our deli cup. And we've got our piece of stocking inside. This gives us our, our humidity to keep these guys happy. No vent in the lid. As you can see, there's a little bit of um, condensation there. But the actual environment that they're in stays dry. It's just humid. So I think... We are going to leave them there for now, and we're going to we're going to catch them off camera, I think, because I've got a feeling they're going to go everywhere. So, on a little recap, we we have just moved our feather leg baboon, the Stroma, Stromatopelma calciatum. Now, these guys have got a terrible reputation for being quite a fearsome spider, a scary spider, really fast very aggressive, and what is classed as medically significant venom, which basically means if you get bitten by one of these, you're probably gonna to need to go to hospital because the pain will be intense. But as we have shown there, we have just removed a full grown adult female from her babies with no stress whatsoever. We saw no threat postures, no aggression. We've taken her out of her old enclosure, put her to a new one and walked her out nice and gently. And we saw nothing of the kind. This is an old world species baboon. And what we're trying to show here is that even the, the real bad old world aren't bad if you treat them gently, nice and kindly. And I think we've shown that there. So in terms of care, Nice simple setup. These are a, a um, come from West Africa. 
Now, most of the year it stays relatively hot there. So these guys enjoy a temperature up around about the 80 degree mark, keeps them absolutely perfect. And they like a high humidity. So 75, 80%, even 85%, 90%. It's not gonna affect these guys, they love it. But you do need good ventilation if you're gonna have this high humidity. So we keep them nice and warm, nice and humid. The moss, the plants, everything, this will all help in creating this enclosure into the, the type of environment that we require for this spider. Now, as babies, these little tiny slings, when we separate these and we house them separately, they don't really need an arboreal setup like the adults. The adults, the adults are fully arboreal, but as babies, they just need a couple of inches of substrate and they will burrow down. That's where they live in the ground. They'll stay there until they become um, small juvies and then eventually they'll move up and they'll start going a little bit higher up um, in enclosure size. So they're not fully arboreal when they're babies. A lot of people worry about this. They are more of a terrestrial when babies, so they bury down in the substrate. And this is because they can stay humid under there and it helps for when they're molting and everything else. It's the perfect environment. So if you have a baby, um, don't worry if you don't see it because it's buried in the soil. It's normal behavior. Almost all of the arboreals will bury as babies. So now then, although we've seen that we can deal with them and have them come across in a nice, well-behaved manner, I wouldn't suggest these for an all-out beginner. They can be very, very fast and they can be defensive. So you need to be at a level that you're comfortable with your, your handling and how you react to different things. If, if you can keep the nerves down and stay nice and calm, nothing wrong with one of these guys. They're an absolutely stunning species to have. So um, just bear that in mind. If you're a bit jumpy, maybe not just for you just yet. Not doesn't mean forever, just yet. Get your confidence first and then you can deal with them. Right then, well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see the pairing of these guys, it's only a few videos back and you will see how we paired her with that lovely young male, stunning looking male, and this is the end result. So we'll come and have a little look at these. Absolutely fabulous. These will be available. Look at that, they're such leggy little things, look. Hello, come and shake hands. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? Now these guys here, these will feed on um, fruit flies. They'll take fruit flies down and they'll munch through them and they grow pretty quick. They're one of these spiders that the more food that goes in, the faster they grow. So um, keep them up with food, but keep them under, keep them in with very small food. As you can see, they're a tiny, tiny little sling. So fruit flies for these guys to start them off. And once we've had a molt or two out of them, then we'll move them up to micro crickets and first hatch red runners, and then progressively get bigger and bigger. As a full grown adult, they'll take on adult dubias, no problem whatsoever. Um, and they don't need that much food either. So remember, I probably feed these uh, as a maintenance diet, one adult, maybe every fortnight. And when I'm getting them ready for breeding, the females, they'll have a, an adult every week to get that conditioning up, get their body weight up. So, uh, but just for general maintenance, keep them on the low side. Right then guys, we're back. And that was rather epic. We have managed to catch 207 baby feather leg baboons. And we had one casualty, unfortunately. My fault. So, I say we call them, camera lady called them. But we have got some really cool footage of how she actually manages to catch all these up and manipulate them from the egg sac and everything else. So we've, we've got a little bit of footage there to show you as well.
um, now, if you want to come over and have a look at these, as you can see, we've got them in our nursery pots. And just for ease, we put 60 in each pot. They should have calmed down a little bit. There we go. Look at those, aren't they amazing? Now these will be fed primarily on um, fruit flies until they start getting a little bit of size. Aren't they wonderful? Absolutely amazing. Now the only bad thing obviously is it's a, it's a bit of a heart racing moment every time you open the lid to try and feed them. And as you'll all know, these guys are super fast and then you've got a tub of super fast fruit flies. And I can just guarantee it's going to be absolute chaos. So um, we might for a giggle later on have a little video and see how we get on. But, uh, but yeah, so there you go. 207. I think that's a real result. We're normally looking at, with these particular species, um, anywhere between 100 and 200. Normally averages out about 150 or so. So I think we've done a really, we've got a super sack there. That was really, really cool. So as we said, these will be... Um, available you can message us up on facebook drop us a message if you uh if you fancy some right then well i hope you enjoyed that i think that's a rather a lovely looking um lovely looking enclosure there don't you think um this will be another one that we can add on to the shelf they're all slowly getting done well i hope you enjoyed that and don't forget be calm be gentle and love your spider i'll see you soon guys